All right, welcome back. At this point, it is our esteemed pleasure. It's an honor to have the head honcho himself on the couch with us. Head honcho is just a term of endearment because he has been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Talking about now music head honcho, Ife Omorigwe, co-founder Hypertech Music or Hypertech Digital, uh, 960 Music Group, and founder Buckwild Media Network. Yes, of course. Ife is a talent, Uncle Ife. Yes, a talent. <laughs> but still pinch me. He's a talent <laughs> manager, music executive, writer, and creative entrepreneur. He definitely has got several, in, sorry, multiple industry awards, such as Special Recognition Awards, the Headies Award 2022, Certificate of Recognition, World Tourism Organization, and so much more. more. Lifetime Achievement Awards, SSMA, mm -hmm. the South South Music Awards, yeah. unsung hero of mm -hmm. the entertainment industry. You know what? <laughs> Let's just hand the mic over. I told to you it was long. It <laughs> is. Your CV for entire Wikipedia level. <laughs> Welcome to the show, boss. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. It's great to be here. I have this. There's so many questions, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think you should just let us into the reason why you decided that the industry was worth investing your time and energy in. Can we start with a fight first? A fight? You want yeah. to fight? Yes, okay. I want to All fight. Right. What's the fight? I'm in a fighting mood. <laughs> why did it take you guys so long to bring me here? Mm. Mm. Interesting question. Because this, this is the coolest place to be in the morning. Live oh. music, <laughs> jollof Life rice, food. you know, fantastic <laughs> host, great Aww. show. Uh -huh, thank so you. you, you, you we have, to, we have, <laughs> anyway, we have words. It's, it's great to be here, uh, and, uh, but it's, this is going to be a particularly uh, difficult uh, exercise for me mm. uh, because the aroma of, you know, the, <laughs> the yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, and uh, I, I probably haven't eaten in three days. You know how the economy is this day. Yeah, wow. wow, you went there. <laughs> but the economy doesn't seem to be too bad for the artists that are raining these days, or are we wrong about that? Is it all No, no, you're not wrong, you're not wrong. If, if you have big numbers, you are, this is the greatest time to be in the space. Mm. This is the greatest time to be alive. If you're a Nigerian and you're in the music space, if you have the right numbers. Mm. If you don't have the right numbers, mm. Tony on you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, okay, so now, first of all, I will say your outfit is really, really, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. I love it. Thank you very much. It's also really distracting. Mm. Like, it's distracting me. Like, yeah, I just want to look at it. It's really nice. Mike, you know, I've, I've got I have a friend, you know, who, who hooks me up, you know, with this really fly gear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and if, if you're not going to charge me, you know, um, I'll probably just give Mention you a shout out to Nicole. Kedov Kochori. Ooh, Kedov. Yeah, the clothes, uh, RMD, the, you know, the, the, oh, yeah, so. Amazing. Nice. Yes, yeah. Probably drag them in sometime. <laughs> okay, sir, first of all, I mean, being in your presence literally is literally sitting in the presence of someone who has literally done so excellently well across board industry wise now i want to ask you from a very young age was this always the vision or did you just, ha just happen to find yourself achieving different things no no this is always it was, it wasn't a vision it was an obsession mm. um I, it's hard for me to picture myself doing anything else because i literally literally grew up on music mm. what, I'm, what what i'm trying to say is that I sat down in one spot for hours on end, day after day, week after week, and I was growing from a, a six, four-year-old kid to a six-year-old kid mm -hmm. to a nine-year-old kid, mm -hmm. and I was just sitting there. And every time I wasn't in school, I wasn't getting into trouble, I, I, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> playing football, I was at that spot, wow. uh, just sucking up stuff. And I was just, just playing the records. Uh, back in the day, we had, you know, the vinyl, yeah. And um, so I had this uh, Egbon, mm -hmm. Alex, you know, uh, Yowe Bush, big shout out to him, was a re record collector. Mm -hmm. he, he later actually, you know, started DJing and opened like a music store. Um, himself and his elder sister, Betty, they, they collected f records. And you know, back in the day, the, the records, you know, they had like all the liner notes, all the credits, some, some oh. of them had the lyrics. Yes, yeah. yes. Right? So, most of what I learned, even the, I learned reading English wow. from, from liner note credits and wow. song lyrics, my, my, my you know, affection for, for poetry, for, mm. for, you know, 
everything. Everything. So I would everything. sit down in that spot wow. and I'd just play record after record. Wow. Oh, amazing. And I learned about the world. Through music. The, yes, I learned about the entire world just, you know, listening to music. What a, it must have been alarming for your parents to see this because uh, back in the day it was all about being an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Um, and I'm thinking if I see my child just looking at music all day, I'm like... Yeah, so what was, was but then again, those records, for, for you to have yeah. access to them, someone in your family was yeah. definitely... That's amazing. a funny thing. It wasn't even my family, it was a neighbour. Oh, it was right. a neighbour. But, but we, we're, 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 distant, we're distant relatives, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, so yeah. we, just, we just happened to grow up in the same, you know, yeah, the same compound, and, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the, the stuff was there, and, you know, would, you know and I just... It's, it's amazing how... I just move like two doors, <laughs> get into their living room, yeah. you know, just sit and down, you know, you like, like and everybody knew yoga you were there. style, yes, and <laughs> we just, you know, like start playing records. Amazing, yeah. amazing. amazing. And so, I learned about, so oftentimes I listen to records, you know, I love the music and all of that. Very eclectic, wide range of, you know, styles and genres, you know. But I was really fascinated with the credits. Okay. Mm. So I knew from, before I was eight, I, I, I knew that, you know, sometimes the, the vocalist was not the songwriter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the song had five, six, seven writers. True. Um, uh, so I knew about sound engineers, I knew about, you know, backup vocals, I knew about samples, wow. you know, that they would have to clear this, this because I, I heard bits of, and um, pieces of stuff from music. I thought, this sounds like something from this other person's record. Yeah. Or that, or, yeah. you know, that. So you understood. So, yeah. Science. Yes. Ownership. Yeah. You understood ownership. You understood rights. My, you understood... my heroes were not just the foreground figures, but the background figures. Background. I knew names like De Griffey. I knew names like, you know, like, 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 uh, 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 La Motosia, the, the the writers from uh, from Motown, you know, yeah. Barry Gordy, yeah. you know, the whole, you know, hit squads. I, I knew about those guys, but I'd ever seen photographs of them or seen, you know, because they were all background people. So but I then really again, you, you have to consider the environment we're in. Um, it, it wasn't the healthiest environment to grow it as an industry as at that time, you know. Um, yes, we were, there was a lot of room for entertainment, but growing an industry uh, and understanding, you know, how to make sure that these uh, talents were groomed the right way, there wasn't much mentorship as at that time. Okay, so um, I disagree. Okay. I grew up in the 70s, you know, I was born in 71. I got it really, really deep into music by 75, 76. Um, by 77, 78, I started collecting, you know, cassettes, right? I didn't have a cassette player, but I had cassettes. So if you, if, if you yeah. gave me money or something, I was more likely going to buy, you know, a Bob Marley, you know, Exodus, out, you know, cassettes or something. You had this, anyway, that, that's, you know, <laughs> right? But in the 70s, there was an industry. There was a vibrant, bubbling Nigerian music industry. We had a lot of what is happening today, a lot of it we had experienced before, right? We had big superstars from King Sonia Days to the likes of Sir Victor Waifo to the likes of, of uh, Bongo Sikwe, mm -hmm. Rex Lawson, you know. Before the era, before the 80s when you had the likes of uh, uh, um, Chris Okotier mm, yeah. and GDOB, you know, Felix Liberty, the music industry was, was doing well, doing really well. Now, so you, 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 we had a national uh, scene, mm. but we also had the regional scenes. Mm. So growing up in Wari mm -hmm. and Saple, I knew, I knew idolized artists that you guys in Lagos did not have, you knew anything about, but they were doing great. Some of them even had like hotels where, you know, they like, they, they built hotels and they had like performance, you know, like what you had with, with, with the, uh, the, the African shrine here, or yes, what yeah. you had with um, Lagbaja's um, uh, motherland back yeah, in the day. Yeah. They had stuff like that. We'd see, sometimes you, you see a tour bus, right? And you know, Tony Gray, my school was opposite, right opposite Tony Gray's, you know, it was a great musician called Tony Gray, right? He, he lived right opposite my, my school and they would do rehearsals there and all of that. And you see the massive, you know, uh, touring boss and all of that that they had. So there was a vibrant music industry in the 70s. In comparison with what we have today, you know, going... So you did mention regional. Yes. You know, there's, been a, there's become a spread. Obviously, you're definitely part of the reason why that spread happened. But what had to change? What had to evolve in the industry for it to, for it to come from that era of regional to international? So, so first of all, there was a collapse. Okay. Before, you know, they picked it right back up. Late 80s... Um, 
everything went went down. People have adduced all kinds of reasons, for, but piracy was one of the key reasons. True. Uh, True. Piracy because uh, like in the seventies, the the medium of choice for sound carriers was vinyl, and vinyls were very cumbersome, very expensive to produce, right? Mm -hmm. A vinyl is just something you go, you know, to the back of your house and just like yeah. come up with fake copies. But technology changed and, and the cassettes came in yeah. and the CDs came in right. and it became very easy, much easier to replicate people's works, right? Yeah. So the investors, the major labels were losing a lot of money. Mm, mm. A lot of them were closing down. Mm. A lot of them actually closed down and left. Some sold their assets wow. and they left, wow. right? So from the 70s, 80s, when you had Nigerian artists who were signed to like, like Polygram, mm. which was an international label. Mm -hmm. Philips was an international label. Sony, mm. Michael Kuro was on Sony Records. It was wow. an international label. Wow. Uh, Onyeka Winnie was on Sony. It was an international label. Where there was no Nigerian, there was no Nigerian company. So, so like you have today with Universals and the Sonys and all of that. You know what wow. I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to suggest to our producers that we come back and have a longer conversation and record this yes. as a package because there's so much information you're giving us now. We cannot digest it all in enough time. Yeah. Um, and our chef has been standing by <laughs> to actually... Yeah. <laughs> serve the meal to you and we want you to taste it because you've already talked so much about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it'll be a lifesaver. <laughs> you know. Will you join us in the kitchen? Oh, most definitely. All right, definitely. then. Thank you, boss. Thank you.